NASA has a remarkable fleet of Earth-observing satellites keeping watch over our changing planet. Through natural or anthropogenic forcings, our planet is constantly changing, and the ecosystems we depend on are too. Understanding how our ocean varies is critical, as water is essential for our survival, and we depend on our ocean for food, recreation, and economic development. This animation shows the fleet of Earth-observing satellites that NASA operates, and NASA's Earth Science Program uses 19 cutting-edge missions in orbit, including instruments mounted on the International Space Station, to collect and analyze data that informs the scientific community about our global environment and ecosystems and how they are changing through time. NASA supports a breadth of science that seeks to address the most pressing questions we have about Earth's system and its function. The Ocean Biology and Biogeochemistry Program within the Earth Science Division at NASA headquarters focuses on describing, understanding, and predicting the biological, ecological, and biogeochemical regimes of the upper ocean as determined by observations of aquatic optical properties using remote sensing data, including those from space, aircrafts, and other suborbital platforms. This includes research that focuses on understanding and quantifying the global and regional spatial and temporal variability of ocean biology and ecology, how it's changing through time, and of course understanding and quantifying the impact and feedbacks of the Earth system processes on our ocean biology and biogeochemistry, including carbon sources and sinks. It also includes improving our future climate prediction of ocean biology, biogeochemistry, and ecosystem states. The Ocean Biology and Biogeochemistry Program is part of the Carbon Cycle and Ecosystem Focus Area of the Earth Science Division, which aims at quantifying and understanding biogeochemical, biological, ecological, and biodiversity aspects of the Earth's system. Together with the Terrestrial Ecology Program, the Land Cover and Land Use Change Program, and the Biodiversity and Ecological Forecasting Program, the research supported by the Focus Area aims at better understanding how Earth functions as an interconnected system understanding that a forcing on one side will result in a response in another. For example, heat absorbed by the ocean is transported by ocean currents. Heat and moisture from the ocean and land influence Earth's weather patterns. Precipitation significantly impacts water availability, and all of these forcings impact plant growth on land and chlorophyll concentrations in the ocean. And over two decades of looking at our global biosphere has allowed us to see how our life on the surface of our planet is changing. We can measure how plants grow on land and in the ocean, and how they help sequester carbon from the atmosphere. This visualization represents over 20 years worth of data taken primarily by SeaWiffs, MODIS, and the VIRS sensors. In the ocean, the dark blue to violets represent areas where there is little life due to lack of nutrients, and greens and reds represent areas where there is stuff, including phytoplankton and dissolved and particulate matter. These areas include coastal regions where cold, nutrient-rich water rises from the depth and stimulates primary production, and areas at the mouths of rivers where these rivers discharge nutrients, dissolved and particulate matter into the ocean. On land, the green represents plants, such as forests and grasslands, while the tan represents areas with no plants, such as deserts in Africa and in the Middle East, and white represents snow cover and ice at the poles that changes with the seasons. Using sustained observations through satellite data, we have come to understand how the ocean works and how its ecosystem functions and can change because of ocean variability. Currently, ecosystems face multiple stressors, and it is expected that these stressors will overlap and ecosystems will have to deal with additive effects of these stressors. Biodiversity is a first-order indicator of ecosystem response to changes, and understanding how changes in biodiversity may impact the function of ecosystems, and in turn, the services they provide to us, is critical. NASA, in partnership with NOAA, has been supporting the Marine Biodiversity Observation Network, or MBON, which has been establishing biodiversity baselines globally and developing state-of-the-art methodologies, both in situ and from space, to evaluate changes in biodiversity in the ocean and its implications for ecosystems. The animation that you see here, compiled by Joaquin Trianes from NOAA and Maria Cabana from Oregon State University, shows changing pelagic seascapes, which is a way to relate organisms to their dynamic habitat and track changes within and across ecosystems. 
It integrates a variety of satellite data, such as chlorophyll and sea surface temperature, which you can see to the left. It uses machine learning to determine the dynamic seascapes, which will expand and vary based on changes in the physical and biological variables. This results in the map that you see at large. This information is useful to identify ecosystems and how they change, how far they extend, and habitat diversity metrics. The ocean exerts a significant influence on climate. The ocean captures carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and stores it for long periods of time, helping mitigate climate change. It is estimated that the ocean has absorbed over 25% of all carbon dioxide emissions since pre-industrial times, at a rate between 5 and 12 billion tons annually. This animation, derived from the Echo Darwin Ocean Biogeochemistry model, shows surface winds and CO2 fluxes across our world. Blue areas is where CO2 is absorbed by the ocean, and red areas is where CO2 is outgassed or released from the ocean. The path lines indicate surface winds, which is one of the drivers of, of air-sea CO2 exchange. NASA, together with partners from the National Science Foundation and the Ocean Twilight Zone at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, carried out the expert processes in the Ocean from Remote Sensing Field campaign that collected critical information through satellite observations and state-of-the-art technology for quantifying the export and fate of upper ocean and primary production, and thus better characterize the ocean's biological carbon pump, which is the mechanism that enables carbon sequestration from the atmosphere to the deep ocean. What you see in these images is marine snow, particles that fall through the water column, taking carbon to depth. But the biological pump is not the same across our ocean, which is why global observations of our ocean biology and biogeochemistry are needed to achieve that predictive understanding of the fate of carbon from the surface to the deep, and its link to climate across all marine ecosystems. NASA's vantage point of space is also fundamental to enable coral reef science, the agency continues to invest in improving technologies that can help assess the health and extent of reefs from space. And this includes in situ and airborne research through bioptical measurements. NASA funded the Coral Reef Airborne Laboratory mission, which studied reefs in the Pacific to understand local and regional variables that impact reef health. These data are essential to estimate current global reef conditions and forecast it under scenarios of predicted global climate change. Looking into the future, we're excited to have three ocean-focused missions coming online over the next decade, which will be critical to understand how our coastal ecosystems are changing, including reef ecology. PACE, the Plankton Aerosol Cloud Ocean Ecosystem Mission, will have hyperspectral capabilities that will enable us to better understand and expand our knowledge on things like water quality, which directly impact reef health. PACE is set to launch in early 2024. The Surface Biology and Geology Designated Observable, which is set to launch no earlier than 2027, will also have hyperspectral capabilities at a higher resolution of about 30 meter per pixel. These will be able to resolve the spectral features needed to further our research related to reefs from space. The Glimmer or Geosynchronous Lidar Imaging and Monitoring Radiometer will be a geostationary satellite which will be focused on the Gulf of Mexico and will be able to see critical areas like the Caribbean and parts of the Pacific and enable us to study ocean ecology and biogeochemistry and its rapid changes in unparalleled temporal scales. Glimmer is also set to launch no earlier than 2027. In addition, NASA continues to generate a wealth of data related to climate change, which is critical to understand the ocean's response to future changes. And hyperspectral remote sensing capabilities, or being able to image across the full spectrum of visible and infrared light, is expected to provide us with much more environmentally meaningful information and new applications relevant to society, including assessments of aquatic biodiversity, water quality, and ocean carbon. As space's launch draws near, scientists are working hard to ensure that the data coming from the mission will be able to be quickly applied to societally relevant issues like ocean health and air quality. By measuring the distribution of phytoplankton, which are the tiny plants and algae that sustain marine food webs, PACE will also be able to provide us with information about ocean ecosystems, including fish. And it will also contribute systematic records of key atmospheric variables associated with air quality and Earth's climate. 
The work that we do on Earth on ocean biology and biogeochemistry is also of importance to the understanding of oceans in other parts of our solar system and beyond. Comparative oceanography, or using our planet as an analog to understand ocean worlds, can not only help us in the search of life beyond Earth, but also to better understand our ocean and where our life began and where it's going. The Network for Ocean Worlds is an initiative of the Planetary Science Division at NASA and in partnership with the Earth Science Division seeks to further expand that collaboration between Earth ocean scientists and extraterrestrial ocean scientists and identify pressing questions and tantalizing challenges that call for cross-divisional work. We depend on our ocean. Sustained, high-quality observations are critical to understand how marine ecosystems respond to change and how these affect society. Climate change is impacting all of our ecosystems, and the ocean has a critical role influencing weather and climate. NASA is committed to continuing to study our ocean to better understand changes in its biology and biogeochemistry, how this is impacting ecosystems now, and to achieve that predictive understanding of how this will change into the future.